Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2 o'clock p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the presentation, The Metaverse is Coming and OpenSim Can Show the Way. Our speaker is Maria Korolov. Maria is a published author and covers artificial intelligence for CIO Magazine and cybersecurity for CSO Online. She has also been the editor of Hypergrid Business since 2009. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC21. Welcome everyone, let's begin the session. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. I love being here, uh, back on the stage again. Uh, if you notice this time, I came more prepared. My jacket now matches my slides. I am like all about the metaverse and the future today. Uh, so um, I have been covering this space, uh, like, uh, like you said, since 2009. And I love, I love, I love the idea of being in the metaverse. Um, I'm, I'm a, if if I had a choice between staying in the matrix or not, I mean, I would I would totally make a different decision than um, uh, than they did in the movie. Uh, I think they were totally wrong. Um, and um, uh, so when I first came in, this was in 2009. I was at a conference that IBM was having in Second Life, and it felt like I was at a real conference. That feeling of presence, that feeling of immersion. You all know, you all know it because you're here. For me, that was the big eye-opening moment of I'm in a different place. I'm in a different place and this place is real and this place is valuable and this is going to be something amazing. And what, what I thought at the time was that it was going to happen immediately. <laughs> uh, and I thought that the metaverse was going to revolutionize how we um, shared experiences the same way that the internet revolutionized how we share information. And I still think that it's true, um, but the path to the metaverse has been a little rocky and a little different from what I expected. So if you guys want to talk to me about this or write about it for hyper good business my email is right up there i i welcome uh, your opinions your essays your contributions announcements of what you are doing so let's move on to what the metaverse is in case you are watching this on youtube or in replay because you googled what is the metaverse let me find out let's go take you through it the word meta means above beyond or about the thing itself. It's something that's about above our current universe, beyond our current universe, or, in, or it's about our existing metaverse, such as, for example, metadata is data about data. So the metaverse can, can be interpreted in multiple ways. In the first kind of basic level definition is it's a layer of information that overlays our physical world, like Google Maps or Pokemon Go, or even cave wall paintings. This is something, um, a level of information, of data, of meaning that we place on top of the world. So in that sense, we have been building this metaverse since we invented language. And that is the most generic sense of the word metaverse, rarely used. Um, the, the, another common sense of the word metaverse is shared virtual environments, things like the desktop based environments like Second Life or Minecraft, where like the one we are here in now, where we're interacting with people via avatars in an immersive platform using our existing computers, existing phones, using screens, 
and we've had this for more than a decade. And this, this is a huge, huge universe, Minecraft, World of Warcraft, all these shared worlds, um, Roblox, uh, they're gigantic, super popular with children and a giant billion dollar industry. And something that's being in, invested in continues to be invested in. So we might we may be seeing usage kind of leveling off in Second Life uh, in open sim. We've hit record high numbers this year, but we still seem to be, you know, not really taken off the way I was hoping to. But it is a giant, giant, giant universe of content. And, and for many people, this is the metaverse for, for me as well. When I think of the metaverse, I do think that the open sim metaverse is one kind of metaverse. And finally, we have the metaverse in the sense of the matrix, shared virtual um, reality environments. So this is where you would wear a headset or have a brain implant, and you actually feel that you are literally inside another world where you can look around and it feels like you're someplace else. You've gone inside a computer. You are a virtual being. And this is awesome and very cool and very compelling. And we're just starting to see this happen. Uh, so I picked up an Oculus Quest 2 headset um, a couple of weeks ago, and I've tried dozens of headsets, all the high-end ones, the HoloLens and Oculus and HTC Vive and, and everything that's that's been hitting the market for the past few years. And this is definitely the most usable headset out there today. So if you guys are in the market for a virtual reality headset, um, I strongly recommend the Oculus Quest uh, 2 that just came out. Uh, it's about 200 bucks to 300 bucks, depending on where and how you buy it. Um, and it's it's an all-in-one headset. So you don't have to plug it into the computer. It's wireless. You can move around in it. It's got hand trackers. So you move your hands and um, your hands move in world, which is very kind of immersive and very compelling. S but we're, we're still not like fully there. It's still a little heavy and awkward to use. It's you can get uh, can get uh, hot in there. Um, people can get motion sickness because the the motion in world doesn't match your physical location. You can bump into things and knock over your computer and step on your cat. Uh, so there's there's downsides to it. Um, AR environments um, are an intermediary step where you can see the world around you, but it's overlaid with virtual objects. So for example, you might have a virtual cat sitting on your desk. It looks like a hologram, like the Star, Star Wars holograms. Um, and I think that augmented reality is probably going to be uh, a big mass market introduction for the metaverse for a lot of people, especially for virtual meetings and business events. Um, games like Pokemon Go have already shown that augmented reality can be very compelling. It kind of puts a magical layer over your existing um, uh, over your existing world. And it's very, very cool. Um, yes, you, there is a pass-through camera in the Oculus Quest 2. Somebody just mentioned that in the comments. But it's black and white and very grainy. And so, for example, if you're having a business meeting in World, you can't use the pass-through camera to, to send somebody an email or look something up on your calendar or take notes you know, on your keyboard. Uh, the quality isn't uh, quite that good. Okay, so um, moving on, uh, we've had uh, the idea of this entering the metaverse uh, principle back now for what, 40 years almost? Wow, oh my God, that's a long time. So in the movie Tron, a guy got pulled into his computer. Um, in uh, 1992 is when the term the metaverse was coined in the novel Snow Crash by Neil Stephenson. Um, I highly recommend uh, his books. And um, 
this is this is the beginning of the kind of cyberpunk era of science fiction where there's often a dystopian virtual world in which we're all inside computers or a lot of the action happens inside computers um and obviously we had the matrix in 1999 uh you've all seen it the new matrix movie is coming out soon i already said that uh, you know if, if earth is kind of like in a really bad shape and the aliens are providing you food and drink and keeping you in this you know wonderful virtual world i would just ask to have to get building control over it so that you know you can create stuff in that world why not why have the aliens create everything for you when you can create stuff yourself i mean that's the main thing that the matrix was missing is like individual creativity and world creation world building so if we had that 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 whole setup would have been great and I would like to see if they do that in the next movie, but I kind of, I kind of don't, don't expect much. Uh, Ready Player One uh, basically took the movie Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and put it into a virtual world, where the Oasis is basically like a 3D version of Second Life, and the guy who runs the Oasis decides to leave it in his will to whoever solves a puzzle, basically an in-world puzzle which is an awful way to do corporate succession planning. Just, just as Willa, Willy Wonka's method of finding a successor was just like ridiculous. And uh, in the, this movie, as in many kind of things that are set in the virtual world, things that happen in the virtual world uh, affect the real world. Like you have to solve something in world in order to, to affect something that's actually happening in your life. Um, and I do think that's like a valid approach, but not necessarily the way that they did it in Ready Player One. And also the idea of a single monolithic world controlled by one corporate company, oh, that can't possibly happen. <laughs> so, uh, and then comes this year. So this year, uh, <laughs> if you guys have not seen Zuckerberg's presentation about Meta, and you want to watch a horror movie, you go to YouTube and you watch that now. It is the creepiest thing I have seen online, and I've seen a lot of creepy stuff online. So the idea here is that Metaverse is going all in, and the, on the, uh, Facebook is now going to be called Meta, and uh, the Facebook is, itself is still going to be around, but part of the Meta brand, the Meta is going to be like the umbrella. Uh, they're putting $10 billion into Metaverse development and they're pushing for Metaverse, for their version of the Metaverse to be for socializing, for gaming. Uh, they plan to have some, you know, mind reading capabilities um, and they want to use it for business. And uh, Zuckerberg addressed the issue that maybe companies don't want all their users to have to use their Facebook accounts to do work. Maybe this is an issue. So he suggested that the answer to this is to create work profiles for Facebook users, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And yes, you do need a Facebook account to use the Oculus Quest headset. Uh, it is a ridiculous thing because of the privacy concerns are immense. You can't trust Facebook for anything more than kind of like a secondary marketing effort that you do. Uh, a company doesn't, uh, unless you're the smallest possible company, you're not going to rely on Facebook to do your marketing. You might have a page on Facebook, but you're going to have a website, a mailing list, you know, a whole bunch of other infrastructure. Nobody's going to want to have their metaverse presence be in Facebook. Maybe they might have an event in there for the public or, or something like that, but the privacy concerns are just enormous. In a virtual world, when you're wearing a headset, uh, the company that's running the virtual world literally can see where you're looking. They can see who you're talking to. 
I mean, literally every single gesture that you make, every eye blink, every facial expression that you have is being recorded and analyzed and aggregated. And that's just ridiculous. We cannot have that. There is, a, I mean, please. Okay, a bunch of other news happened. I'm gonna go through it a little bit more. Um, so a, a huge flood of investment into everything related to the metaverse. Um, NVIDIA's Omniverse uh, has a lot of corporate supporters, probably because of the whole Facebook privacy issue. They've got more than 500 f firms signed up to this, which is uh, kind of cool. Uh, it's still corporate control, but more decentralized, more distributed. Uh, the market size is projected for the metaverse to start exploding next year. Um, a lot of investment in, in metaverse related um, activities this year. It crossed 10 billion, more than double, nearly double what was raised last year. Um, and there's lots of reasons why we're getting ready to prime time. Uh, the, the faster, we've got faster processing, cloud, AI, we've got the bandwidth coming down uh, the line, especially with 5G. Uh, we've got lots of virtual payment systems and the headsets are slowly getting to the point that uh, it's getting there. Yes, Unity um, is making uh, big plat investments in the metaverse. A lot of companies are. This is like a huge thing. Um, headset sales are up. I'm like being urged to like hurry up on this. Um, Yes, I love Unity. They do run um, a lot of the uh, virtual world games and environments right now, and it's uh, Science Space runs on Unity, one of the uh, uh, platforms created by OpenSim founder, uh, OpenSim core, early core developer, Adam Frisbee. Uh, meanwhile, another big trend that's happening is the future work is virtual. 70% of companies are planning to adopt a hybrid work model permanently. 97% of people want some form of remote work. 58% of people would quit their jobs if they couldn't work remotely. But there's an 18% drop in team morale and cohesion when working from home. And this is something that a metaverse could address because of that feeling of presence and immersion. And I strongly suggest that these companies look at how open the metaverse. This fully, nobody owns the hypergrid. It's kind of like the World Wide Web with uh, people, lots of different servers, lots of different viewers, uh, even have a multi-grid currency like Globits, kind of like PayPal for an, and other payment platforms for the actual, the regular internet. We have multi-grid payments um, in OpenSIM. Uh, Globit owns the Globit platform, but anybody else can set up a similar kind of payment platform. And I kind of wish they would. Globit had some problems this year. We have a free open source virtual world server that anyone can adapt. The Dream Grid is a cool check out. Where avatars can travel. We can from grid to grid. We can send messages and from grid to grid, send announcements. Fully super. We need that. We don't have these things right now anywhere. Everything we have right now is it's um, the privacy issues are over this. And please, guys, invent a VR version. Of them. I beg you, please, please, all of you guys out there in the in the audience here, go that I am any you know if I can help just let me know <laughs> all right there's my email address and here's the link to the slides if you want to look at the pretty pictures again later all right and uh they're kicking me to get off the stage <laughs> but uh do you guys want me to take questions is there time I don't think so no nope, we are at time <laughs> but that was fascinating I do, I do wish you had more time to talk about it all <laughs> Thank you, Maria, for an informative and interesting presentation. <laughs>
<laughs> As a reminder to our audience, you will want to check out conference.opensimulator.org to see what is coming up on the, next, on the conference schedule. You won't want to miss our next session, which will begin at 2.30 p.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Charanet Creative HQ, Integration of NFTs, AI Art, and POS Blockchain in 3D Immersive Virtual Worlds. Whew. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 21 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speaker and the audience.